Hi, John here. Um, today is Monday, the 22nd of August 2016. It's my court day today in the Auckland District Court. I think it's in front of uh, Judge Collins uh, on this long standing case of 77 Cook Street, right back to 2008. It was 61 Cook Street. So it's changed hands three times at least in a fraud land transaction that has been a bad title right through. So the present landowners are ignorant to the fact that it is a bad title of transaction and mortgage fraud inside the LINS, Land Information New Zealand system of transfers lands from where it came from in the first place. So we are the original landowners, the native landowners, that um, okay, there we go. Uh, I don't um, fancy um, fraud being prevalent with police involved in the cover up of land titles and keeping it within their police law state of their own, which is in question here. My barrister is under the bar, B-A-R in capitals, bar, corporate trust law system, and so is the court. Whereas on the other hand, today's court hearing is not so much about me, it's about the documents that she's fashioned under her own handwriting law of police versus my barrister, Shannon Withers, and his bar law and the court's bar law. She's used me to extract money out of, out of a trust account of a corporate company using fashionable words in capital or caps letter writing mixed up with lowercase mischievous writing that I'm pointing out here in this affidavit today of exhibits that she has to prove how she got authority to do that and where did you get her where did she get her jurisdiction from and seals of a court or a higher authority to make these documents to come inside my house here and arrest me with. I'm challenging the documents more so than the offence against me. The offence is counterclaim. I've told my barrister, Shannon Withers, if you're watching this video, I'm going to email it to you in a minute, with this latest update of exhibits to point straight to her as the criminal accused. I'm the accuser now. She put a contract on me with those documents that I've been showing my hand to and put it into the public spotlight of media court. Trial by media. So it's the media, the people watching Facebook, to see what the outcome is going to be in the court hearing today. Me versus Natalie Flower Du Brown person. The real live person has to be there today because I've been waiting eight months, Shannon, for her to appear in court under subpoena. Now the subpoena cross-examines her of her evidence, show her evidence in front of my evidence, substantial enough to have her locked up. That's what I want. The result is I want her locked up as covering up the fraud inside this land title. She's neither lawyer to fashion her writings as if she's a lawyer or neither is she a land real estate agent to know about the implications and the consequences of tampering with land titles, which is what I'm accustomed to. The bank laws of mortgage fraud and criminal codes that she has broken to add to the case against her in a counterclaim. I'm making a counterclaim against her use of four John One Hours in 
different identities in all capital letters and arresting me in lower capital lower um, case lettering instead of that person in uppercase on her documents. She should have arrested that person, not me, in lowercase. And when it came to pay out in the bail bond to blackmail me, Shannon, I told you, one of the complaints is blackmail. Under the Crimes Act 1961 and 1951, the Crimes Act of blackmail to extort money out of me through a trust that I countersigned a bail bond to let me out of prison, otherwise I can't go without signing a instrument, a legal instrument that she implicated and started a process off by walking in my house here and arresting me and charged me with those documents. I'm saying that Wherever the trail of those documents went, so did the fraud. It linked everyone touching the documents, Shannon, and including the court. The registrar touched those documents. The police touched those documents. Everybody that touched the documents, they are corrupted. Right from the start, because she tampered with the statements of her witnesses. Shannon? I must make this note before I forget it, that it took her six days from the 28th, that's when the marshals went in and took over the office under contract to me. I didn't do it, they did. They said they can do it, so I said, okay, you do it. I won't do it because I'm a private investigator in my own right, native, to investigate who's frauding on our lands, our native lands. So I didn't do the job, they did. I got called in to the site when the police said, yeah, it's okay, let John come in, because I'm standing on the road, right out of the way, and let them do it. There's two, at least two other people missing on the list of people who went into the office to do that job. Now, why hasn't that been seen to? Why is it that there's two people short in the arrest and arrested me, of all people, to pick on. Okay? So, I'm saying this before I forget this one, to make this statement, that the new company, Moai Powerhouse Group Limited, Limited, in the, uh, the company's house in London, UK, is under UK jurisdiction of law as a creditor against Natalie Flowerdew Brown and the two landowners of that land block and every other person they liable. She liabled everybody with those documents because they're fraudulent and corrupted. Shana, I want to make this for the record today. When you get this video, please look at it and add that as my substance evidence. And she has to come up with substance evidence in cross-examination Sabina to court. And full disclosure of who these four men are, John Wanoas, with the same birth certificate as me. She's got to identify those four people because I want them in court. I want them in court. I want a subpoena, those four John Wanoas with different names and capitals because they're impersonating me. That's an offence, criminal act, to extort money out of me signing it, I'm the signatory and the inheritor of that money that someone else, one of those four John Wanoas, signed. One of those four John Wanoas signed, and I want those four identified in the court today. Okay, Shannon, that's an offence. That's impersonating me, a surrogate King William the Fourth sheriff, right online, straight into Westminster, England, and this company with the title Turbines, value of 12.5 billion project. Okay, that's just to give you a size of what I've been doing with land to make do my experience as what I do online is real. I'm swearing that this document I put together <coughs> this morning <coughs> is going to you Shannon, to back my case 
for me because I can do my own talking in court. In a King's Bench court in Waitangi Marae, I'm doing this from there, a high authority with our flag here, and our chief, King Itaurua, watching all of this going on. He has a right straight to England, into Westminster Parliament and the Navy and the military, with me there with that company, Maui Powerhouse Group Limited, one of a billion shares right around the world, in 250 countries, with this flag. Shannon, and the, the public watching this court case today, I'm making it graphic online because these videos are actually me telling you how this court should run to the British UK law system of Admiralty, court martial law of mortgages and liens are come out of this flag for this land. Okay, so I have a right to speak under the king as his surrogate law. Okay, so that's that company <coughs> is now registered as a British company creditor. It is the creditor over these lands in New Zealand and anybody on it because they are our partners in British government, parliament and navy, military. That is our partner contract. 182 years old this year on the 28th of October 2016. 182 years old of continuity of sovereignty to Britain. Okay, so that's, I'm talking contracts. I'm a contractor in the court today with Natalie Flower Du Brown, contractor. Me and her are in a contract, nobody else. It's nobody else's business because I've defaulted Cook Street and she's tampered as a third party. Everyone in that office is a third party, including one of the tenants who put a statement in to you, Natalie, you've done six days it took for you to arrest me after the event happened. <coughs> it's taken you six days to fashion these fraudulent, corrupted documents that are not being authorised from the Bar Association, Law Society of New Zealand, and the courts. Hasn't got a court seal, hasn't got a seal of the Queen, hasn't got a seal of Parliament here, hasn't got a seal of anything, it's only got a police logo. A logo is just a police logo of their business. That's their business. We've got a Maui statue and a king as our logos on our business and there's flag to go with it. It's worth more than anything that you're holding at the moment in your system of police, Natalie. I think the British Navy will be very, very brassful for you and what you're doing to me. I've been on this for a long time. Right, here, this is how it reads. Monday, 26th of August, 2016, court hearing today, 77 Cook Street, mortgage, bad, fraud, title, barrister, Shannon Withers and John Wanoa versus Natalie, CIB, Natalie Flower Du Brown, police corruption of bar law. Would you ever see this in the news where the judge rules in favour of you, the injured victim, that me, or he rules for the police officer who is subpoenaed into court for making her own law versus the Bar Association Barrister's law. It is all in the judge's hands to see who he favours today. <coughs> CIB Detective Natalie Flower Du Brown or Natalie Flower Du Brown in lowercase and Natalie Flower Du Brown in uppercase, two, two fashionable words, or one of these men convicted, John Wanoa in bold, Mr. Wanoa in bold letters, Hawani John Wanoa in bold all the way through, and Wanoa all bold. Those four people, men, and these two men, John Wanoa, that's me in lowercase, and Hawani John Wanoa, that's me. At least two times she's used that name in lowercase of me and mixed up the other ones in all her documents. All her documents are mixed up in those words all the way through it. <coughs> now, I want them subpoenaed into court to identify which is which and who, which is the one doing the signing, the bail bond to get the money out of the trust that I'm entitled to as its inheritor. I want all that money back, what? And, 
and Wano, and these two men, John Wano and me, Hawani John Wano. See, I don't make my name as Hawani John Wano. They did, but they I, I only use John Wano, and so she's only got my name there as a real person, <coughs> all having the same birth certificate. See, I'm making a statement. Now, these documents I'm holding is the law created by the hands of New Zealand's top criminal investigator, police officer Natalie Flowden Brown, in lower case inside the back of the Auckland Central Police Station. She made a hasty exit to Solomon Islands after she arrested me with these documents. She wrote up herself forged statements and stolen identity as trustees of an account to help herself to the bail bond money. One of those persons countersigned John Wanoa, that's me, lowercase, me, real, signature. <coughs> you notice there are two of me as real people, but I only use John Wanoa, lowercase, not Hawani John Wanoa. I never write my name like that in any legal documents or anywhere. <coughs> I used every day, Natalie Flowdu, I use every day. Natalie Flowdu Brown arrested me, that's her in lowercase, <coughs> John Wanar, lowercase, the real man, on this day she came in here, she came as a common law court in her lowercase name, with no hat on, no, no, no full uniform, and a detective at that, supposed to be a constable to arrest me, not a detective, she came here, the, de the constable was standing over there, he potted her, and put her name in capitals, got her, <coughs> caught her, okay, later that happened on the documents, on his statement of claim, as a witness, he put that down with her name in capitals and caught them out, got them out. The real man, me, lowercase, and my real name does not appear any on the arrest papers when she came to arrest me. That name in lowercase is not on there, only the uppercase one. So she arrested me, the natural person, instead of those four people that crooked the money and got the money out. Okay? Extortion, that's what it is. I instructed my barrister, Shell Withers, to cross-examine. Oh, I'm just going to make a correction here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Natalie Flowdu Brown, in, net, uh, in lower case, and Natalie Flowdu Brown, in upper case, two people, these questions. Those two people she's acting as, all the way through the documents, it changes around and mischievously plays around with language to deceive you. She's deceived me, people, on this <coughs> media trial by trial by media court case I'm doing online here as a surrogate king sheriff, King William the fourth sheriff with Kingy Toto as chief Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court from Waitangi I'm conducting this online straight from that court okay 15th of April 2016 we opened up that court for business on his land that we're seizing his land that Marae and the ship of King William IV and everything back into his custody after this law. <coughs> right, one, these are statements and exhibits. One, who gave you authority? Natalie. Lower. You. Brown. I've got to hurry up and get to court. Brown, to write your own law to arrest John Wanar. There. Whose seal are you using on your documents to base your authority on to make your own law to arrest John Wanar? Charge. John. Tenants, the 
office stuff for the landowner. There. <coughs> Just added that bit. <coughs> Three. Have you got the court seal and authority to enforce your laws on these documents you created in your own handwriting to arrest Jadon Wano? To arrest John Wano. That's wrong. <coughs> Natural man. Why did you write four? Why why did you write John Wano in uppercase? Lowercase John, uppercase Y, no, our name, in pen on one of your documents, which shows clearly and physically you know what you are doing to handwrite his name, John Wanoa, is accusing you his name, like this, for your own financial investment interest not the public of New Zealand <coughs> John Ars Ars where did the money go? Accusing you of forging his identity as theft of his inheritance money. This is his evidence that you are a fraudster that stole his money with four names that look like his, but that he never signs and legal documents any <coughs> legal documents in that lettering uppercase or all caps corporate legal language to deceive anyone. Clearly it shows you here, writing with your hand as the author. Exhibit 1, as John Wallanoa calls it. Identity theft. Of writing. Exhibit 2. John Wanoa calls these names John Wanoa in uppercase, Mr. Wanoa in uppercase, Hawani John Wanoa in uppercase, and Wanoa in uppercase, and John Hawani Wanoa in lowercase, natural name. He never uses, but you did use them in these documents to <coughs> defraud me. Exhibit 4. John Wanoa says you use these, these bundle of your own law forged statements of witnesses' papers. <coughs> you also altered and tampered with the same name, all caps, language to defraud him of an inheritance lot of money he's claiming in this court today. This is legal property he wants back today in this court. All of its 67 years of his living birth certificate value value <coughs> audited it audited it account stolen against his real name you arrested John one hour to enforce on him in his residence home and then legally le illegally convict him of a crime he did not do he says, says he did not do. Exhibit 5. John Wanoa states that from the date of the 77 Cook Street encounter, <coughs> where police attended a public complaint from a tournament group limited company employee, on 28 September 2015, it took till the 3rd of October 2015 to arrest me and charge me, John Wanoa, in lowercase, 
with forced entry and trespass on 77 Cook Street. Exactly six days to fashion these documents, write these documents, fashion, write these documents and make your stories up with the help of the landowners Jane Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree in lowercase <coughs> and his tenants, staff and office there with police. With police as third parties to my default contract with the landowners. With the landowners. <coughs> I always wanted his staff not to get involved. They placed themselves in harm's way then to leave it to the landowners. Now you see the evidence of a corruption of the law by these people with their convincing lawyers and police lawyers. And <coughs> convincing, corrupted. Corrupted land, convincing lawyers, and corrupted police officers to hide the real problem is what John Wanoa says is mortgage fraud, bad land title history of events. <coughs> events. From its outset in 2008 to 2012, he made a complaint through Utah Choice QC commercial contract lawyer to the High Court of Admiralty in London. Is on the record signed by Troy as his proof back then there is a claim over the land now in the defaulted contract. Contract to the second, to the two last owners. Now these two landowners, convinced lawyers, never responded to me at all to back off or they will get the police. They left the complaint to their tenants and staff. At least one tenant <coughs> made a complaint to CIB. Geez, just while I'm auditing, editing it. Detective Natalie, that shows it was a public complaint. The landowners plan to shift the liability onto as third parties because they know the title is bad transfer fraudulent transactions the lawyers keeping away from me the original Manukau my one or land title holders undisputed title bad title transfer the lawyers and landowners owners no it's corrupted say nothing with guns, third party, to the fraud, DM Jonky, liability, so, <coughs> way from me, the original Manukau, my one or land title holders, unspeeded title. Where is five? Where is your proof he went onto the land without authority of the police? Six. Who is the name on the trespass order that is making the complaint? Seven. Where is your evidence John committed? One or <coughs> committed <coughs> these offences himself when he is on the road and was called in by police. He was not the man pulling staff from the office and where is the other two men missing from that group who are contracted to seize the land and buildings with a defaulted contract in place lodged with the CIB before he went in there? Why has it turned out to be a crime from a notice to seize 
land like any other private investigator would do. Do. He says he is a sheriff and still is on with his sheriff, King Toda Marai Authority. Authority. Direct to Britain. Britain. UK contract. <coughs> Obligations. Land. Sovereign. King. William. Port. Admiral. Where is your burden of proof your documents are authenticated outside the Bar Law X jurisdictions? 9. Who gave you the jurisdiction to arrest John one or with your documents? T. <coughs> John one states clearly that you liable, the landowners, their staff and tenants, now he can sue them. Now John can sue them all over or for whatever he thinks in the High Court of in London, UK. He already made intentions to do that from 2012 letter to of complaint to QC type U type Choi Auckland Choi lawyers and barristers and Judge David Lindsay Mackey in the High Court in London. It's all on YouTube and his Facebook and website MyPowerhouse.com. <coughs> John Wanoa versus CIB, Detective Nata, Natalie Flaudu Brown for her to defend a public in public media trial by trial. Trial by public media and the website where she is online. I've got a website there in Facebook just for her. Seven. That's all the facts I have there. She has to deny it and her face is there in the wanted column. She's done nothing about it. Okay? She can't do anything about that. Because she injured me, her, not the police force, her. I'm allowed to do that because Pope Francis says liable anyone because those are his laws she's using against me. Okay? The Bar Association laws have been destroyed by Pope Francis and trusts and corporations. You can't use those on me, uh, Sharon. <coughs> I want you, Natalie Flowdrew Brown, to give your evidence of these names. Mr. Wanoa, lowercase. Mr. Wanoa, I suppose the uppercase. See, just as well I'm making corrections. Mr. Wanoa, low uppercase, caps, all caps. John Wanoa, all caps, and Wanoa. John Hoani Wano, the whole name in upper uppercase, and Wano in uppercase, all in uppercase, which man countersigned my signature on the bail bond as John Wano me, natural man, blackmail me to allow me to be released from prison under this contract you initiated as the offender the day you illegally walked into my home on these documents that were corrupted by your words and brain. He says six days of conspiracy with others to use them for pecuniary gain to swindle them. And his money. money. <coughs> Though you legally walked into my home. Third. Third. October 2016. 5. 2015. 2015, yeah, that's right. 5. That are corrupted by your hands and brain. He says six days of conspiracy with others to use them for pecuniary gain to swindle him and his claim to the money. 
to his inheritance, the tenth money. Eight. From then, these contract documents were void of any legitimacy because they have been tampered with without authority or jurisdiction of the court on the day you, Natalie Flowdu Brown, started that process. Third. Oh, for the date. Third. October 2015, you arrested me. Me. With them. Them. After that day, it shows nine. After the day, it shows that in Exhibit 1, or Exhibit 6 now, that your colleague constable statement named you as Natalie Flower Do Brown in all, all capital letters, your other corrupt identity person, the same has appeared in all documents following your corrupted trail. <coughs> Oof, I'm making a lot of questions. Of documents, you must prove who is really the criminal. John 1-0 in lowercase states clearly is you, Natalie. Exhibit 7, accused, accused. Exhibit 7, John Wanoa in low case, is the director founder of Moai Powerhouse Group Limited, Limited in uppercase, London Company's House, as creditor in uppercase, under UK jurisdiction of law, over Natalie Flower Du Brown, lowercase, police law, Corrupted the bar law uh, over Natalie Flower Drew Brown, full stop. Police law, you, you use your in said police law to words. To effect <coughs> an arrest, corrupted the bar law, bar in capitals, <coughs> law of the Auckland District Court for the record today. Instructions of these exhibits now have now been emailed to my barrister Shannon Withers. I'm going to email with this video here in a minute. Shannon Withers asked the court to dismiss the charge of trespass against John 1 Owen in low case and forced entry and allow me as creditor to seize 77 Cook Street property assets of James Pierce Brown and Simon Brent Roundtree and Natalie Flower Do Brown and lock them up with the land conveyancing lawyers who broke the New Zealand Crimes Act 1961 and 1951. That I cited with Pope Francis Vatican City law citations to make my claims absolute. Absolute um, truth. Law. Um, truth. Claims. Today. <coughs> Exhibit 8, Affidavit. I, John Hawani, I, John Kahaki Wanoa, oh, I'm going to put that in capital J. Whew, I've corrected lots of mistakes. Creditor, King William for Surrogate King Sheriff, Native Assessor and Customary Legal Advocate. Swear to God, this my truth statements of claim. So help me God, it is my sovereign truth. I swear in court in front of my accused, Sabina into court today to face me and Judge Collins. Sabina, Natalie, Flower, you, Brown,
G-I-B Detective. Brown. Levy. Detta. Face me, Levy Creditor. Creditor. <coughs> and bronze. Sign. John Kahaki Wanoa, My Powerhouse Group Limited, UK Jurisdiction Partners and Business Creditors. So I'm saying the new company that I've registered on the 15th of August 2016 is the creditor under this jurisdiction of UK law and this flag of Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court opened up for business. This flag is legal. It is being mandated and <clears throat> authorised as the law of native title that I've got all online. It's been authenticated and open for business in the company's house in London, UK, as a one-off a billion shares to raise 12.5 billion pounds. That's the strength of this company as creditor over Natalie Flower Du Brown, detective, all the police force, she liable, because I warned them in letters and affidavits, and <clears throat> the landowners, I warned them, I warned the police in the Auckland Central Police Station, I warned everyone with affidavits. Three affidavits constitutes law. Law makes a contract, contract makes the law. In default, if you get to the third one and you never reply or respond with a counterclaim against me, it's law. That's why I went in with those contractors to seize the land and then the police stepped in and made it a complaint, public complaint, which had nothing to do with a defaulted contract. They tampered with the defaulted contract. The British will sort that out. Rather than me go through the British court, which will be very expensive for everyone that's liable, right up to John Key. He's liable because he let these agents of the Crown Corporations do break the law. The 1961 Crimes Act is being broken. And you'll see all the citations I put to my barrister online. That's my court online, straight into the Westminster government our partners in business with this flag. That's our private business that no one can tamper with since 1835, 28th of October. This year, 182 years, we still have a contract. We might not show that we've done anything, but the Tidal Energy Project is going to bounce off with the pound note levy data instrument against all of you police and all of you politicians who have tampered with our native land titles. Okay, Kingy Toro, Chief, did you get what I just said in public on this statement of claim, affidavit, verbal affidavit online that the judge accepts you two as my evidence and substance claim that what I say is my truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God, it's really true. What I say is for you to object or deny on a cross-examination Detective Natalie Flower Du Brown mischievous woman with the handwriting you handwritten John in lowercase and Wanoa in upper all caps you hand wrote that on one of the documents you signed as my exhibit that you knew what you were doing by putting the name like that you didn't do it like that for nothing that's caught you out that's my evidence to wipe the case out and seize the land and seize everything back into the hands of the shareholders inside the Moai Powerhouse Group Company Limited, Limited, all over the world. So everyone joining, that's your claim with us. Moai is for everyone. King William IV is for everyone in the world in 250 countries with this flag.
we can sail around the world anywhere we want with the flag. Right now. Okay, that's all I want to do. I better get this off and get into the court. It is now 8.15 and I better get a move on. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Shanna, this is for you. I'm emailing it to you now. From me, good day.